Hi everyone, it's Therese. Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. We're doing yet another bullet journal setup and plan with me video today. The current month has been surprisingly eventful since I was spending time with family, but now it's also time for a new monthly Bujo setup. We're doing June 2023 and it's going to be my last month in this notebook that is looking pretty chunky and I love it. Anyway, let's get started with the setup. For this month's theme, I decided to go for fruits and shellfish in a picnic kind of setting that gives all the summer vibes. It honestly became one of my favorite setups and considering myself as not much of a summer person, this gives me excitement so I'm really excited for you to see how all the spreads turned out and I hope you like it too. Watercolors are my preferred coloring medium for the illustrations but you can also use brush pens or any of your favorite coloring supply. Here are the main colors on my palette. I have red, yellow, green, blue, and light brown, but I'm also gonna be mixing a few more shades in the process. As always, we start with the cover page. I am painting a bunch of fruits and shellfish in a flat lay composition. I sketched many elements, but I'm going to paint the whole thing by color because it's easier for me to paint all the elements in the same color or shade at once and transition into the next color instead of going back and forth. I am painting all the reds first. I have here some watermelons, grapefruits, and crustaceans such as prawn, lobster, and crab. I painted the fruits with bright red and then I just mixed a bit of dark brown to make it deeper for the shellfish. I am painting these elements loosely in this stage but I will be adding details once the base layer are all done. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away show us where we are what makes the sun go to sleep every night and what's it dreaming of i wonder how come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds maybe it's just like me our next color is yellow, so I painted some lemons. They are really small, so it would be helpful to use a detail brush, but I also found myself just using the tip of the round brush a lot in the entire setup since it also has a nice pointy end, though you will have to control the amount of water. So we have lemons and there also is a bottle of champagne. I painted the neck with yellow and brown mix and then the body with brown and a bit of red. I also have a wooden chopping board with a couple of scallops on top that I painted with a base of yellowish brown. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside? Me wonder. Then I'm moving on to the green element. I have some branches of leaves just for some fillers in the composition, then on the rind and skin of watermelons, as well as green grapes. How come the trees get undressed when it's cold? And don't they miss the leaves they left behind? Could it be to make the ground shine like cold until winter comes? Until winter comes? Until winter comes? It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. Lastly, are the blue elements. 
and these are the kitchen towels or blankets underneath though I added a little red one under the chopping board. I just painted these irregular shapes with a very light consistency for now. We will go back to these later because we are doing my favorite part which is the additional layers of paint to all these illustrations. As you can see, they are looking flat in their initial layers so we are basically just painting the shadows and create highlights to add a bit of structure and to separate the elements that are on the front from the ones that are behind. So I started with the reds again with a deeper shade and painted them to the areas where I think need some depth. The same goes with other colors. I mixed them with a darker color to create a darker shade. I'm also going element to element by following the same sequence just like how I did when painting the base layers. This step takes most of the time when painting with watercolors but trust me, it's worth adding because it gives life to your illustration. In this stage, I try to finish all the little details too such as the watermelon seeds, wood patterns, fine lines, and the kitchen towel stripes. I went over the shadows a few times, especially on the towels, since I was trying to estimate how dark I want the folds to be, but not too dark. But also making sure that the paint on the paper dry up first before applying again to avoid bleed through. The final step in this painting is adding the drop shadows to all of them using a warm gray mixture. I just applied them on the right side of the elements and this is a great touch because adding them help make these pop nicely on the page. Alright, we're pretty done here. I know having a lot of things in a page can be too much, so if you're planning to paint something like this for June or any monthly setup or just practice painting, you can maybe just take some elements out of it. I think it will work great too. On the top center of the page, I added the June title using a black Tombow brush pen in this round font. I wrote all the letters in capital, very simple and cute. And that's everything for this cover page. I'm really happy with it. But it's time to flip over the next pages to create a monthly spread. Before doing the functional parts of the layout, I want to start with the illustration on the upper left page. I'm doing the same principles where I'm painting the base layers first. I started with a round plate using warm gray and then there will be a blue towel under that that is laid diagonally. Th 
then we have several lemons on it a couple whole lemons and some sliced ones as well as sliced grapefruits the citrus paintings were pretty small so i honestly struggled a bit especially on the sliced ones trying to keep thin white lines in between these triangular shapes but of course we can always use a white gel pen to fix that then we also have leaves here and there and going back again to add the shadows or darker shades Then I'm writing the June title again on the empty space with a black brush pen. So this page will be my calendar. For the layout itself, I glued this sand-like color strip of paper as the background for the days. But you can absolutely use a coloring pen for this. I simply wrote the days and dates and drew the lines using a Pigma Micron. I guess I got my calendar correct this time because I always mess it up. Last month, the mistake was big time, but thank you for noticing and letting me know in the comments. I'm glad I still got to fix them. For example, I covered some with colored paper and the other with opaque colors such as gouache or acrylic paint pens since I also wrote a mini calendar on top of a painted illustration. Anyway, onto the next page is my focus and goals. I wrote the titles first and this time they are in lower cases. I drew simple horizontal lines in the focus section and also added the same strips of paper beside the titles. The goals will be divided into subsections but I decided to work on one more illustration on the bottom of this spread. I am painting this top view of a glass of rosé, green grapes, scallops, chopping board, a huge slice of watermelon and a branch of leaves. I printed some more colored papers that speak summer to me. These three are citrus colors obviously and we have orange, lemon, and grapefruit. I already cut them out in these sizes. I think they are 7 by 16 spaces. I also cut the parts where the watercolor painting is so they still show up instead of gluing the whole paper on top. The papers are pretty thin so I could still see the outline of the painting, I just traced and cut them. If you have colored papers at home, you can use those too. It doesn't have to be exactly as these, 
but if you'd like to print them yourself just leave a comment below so i can provide the color codes that i used now we're on to the next spread this page is for my habit tracker i'm writing the title again in lower case in terms of the layout i'm using some more colorful papers I cut these into boxes that will fit mini calendars. I have additional colors here such as light green, light pink, and light blue. Some of these are just leftovers from past monthly setups. If you remember, it's always good to make use of them instead of throwing them away. The habits are written on top of the boxes, then I'm drawing the grid lines using this Zebra Sarasa Vintage Color Gel Pen. I want to know if you guys have changed or have a different set of habits to track then and now or if they are still the same. Just let me know in the comments. I want to skip most of the painting here but I still wanted to have at least some illustration to keep this page interesting and fun so I decided to draw the same elements using a black pen. Since we already have the colored papers as accents here, I think keeping the illustration simple looks great. But I did paint the leaves around the corners and edges. Alright, moving on to the following pages will be my devotional spreads. I'll have 8 pages that I'm cutting out to turn into Dutch doors with tabs. When setting up my monthly spreads, I always consider how the binding of the empty pages are looking, if they are right in the middle of the thread, and how much I can cut, making sure the pages connected to them are not falling off, so that's also a factor on how I want the layouts to be, in case you are wondering. <laughs> anyway, I glued these long strips of sand-colored paper and more colored papers on the tabs. I'm also gluing bigger cuts of the same size as the page to cover the front and the back. On the front, I'm writing the Into the Word title on the center with the same font and the devotional plan or topic that I want to dive into next month in this cursive lettering. You can find these devotional plans in the YouVersion app if you are also studying the Bible. And then on the back side, I'm writing this beautiful verse from the scripture, For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Okay, we have this page left in the spread. Now let's continue with another watercolor illustration. I am painting some oranges and lemons, a crab, leaves, and of course, a blue towel. There are so many ways to use the same elements to create a whole setup and still make them look cohesive yet different with each other. I know sometimes they can be repetitive in the viewer's perspective, but to create one for yourself, it's a good idea to stick with the same components. All you need to do is change up the placements and come up with a new composition apart from the previous one. If you are making something that includes several elements, like in the cover page for example, 
In the next illustration, you can remove a few or so, but of course, you can still add a new one related to the theme you chose as long as it doesn't feel overwhelming. You might be wondering what this page is for, but when I'm done with the painting, I'm going to add this little paper on top. You might think, what's the point of the painting if I'll just cover it like this? <laughs> but I'm not going to glue it. Instead, I'm using a round sticker to kind of just hang it here so I can flip it up and still have that view of the painting. So this will be my current little list. The idea is from Ashley of Real Paper Pages on Instagram. This is just a fun place to write anything you are currently into. You can list like what you are currently loving, reading, learning, watching, and so on. Okay, that's definitely an interesting layout, but I like it. Now let's move on to set up my weekly spreads for June. Dutch Doll layout is my friend when it comes to weeklies because it's easy to make, it saves so much time and gets everything ready especially when I'm busy or not feeling like creating individual spreads every week. So here I just cut out around 3 dot spaces vertically while also leaving a tab on each page. Likewise, I also glued colored papers on them, and as for the daily boxes, I cut 6 squares of this sand-colored paper. Then I just simply wrote the days and dates on the top with lines under. I am planning to use other colors for the rest of the weeks, but I'll just do that off camera. This weekly layout is inspired by my March weeklies last year. I loved having a large illustration on the left side of the spread, so we're painting some more watermelons, grapefruits, lemons. I'm actually painting a branch of lemons here. Then there also is a bottle of champagne, scallops, green grapes on a plate, leaves, and blue towels. I won't be painting any more shellfish this time, so this is what I meant earlier about creating with repetitive design elements. You can remove some and come up with a different composition or arrangement. I hope you already got the idea with my painting style here. Flat base layer and then depth using darker shades of the initial colors. You can try doing that in your paintings and just see how they come to life. <laughs> Now 
Instead of just doing stripes for the towel patterns, I made the one on the right side with a grid pattern. I was thinking of adding a background color in the cover page, but I just left it as it is. Here I decided to add a subtle wash of sand-like color. I also made them intentionally streaky. As you can see, I left some spaces on the upper and lower right of the illustration. That is where I'm writing another June title, a mini calendar under it, and another verse from the scripture. It's one of my favorites. Now that my weekly layout is done, we are on to our last spread to set up, my month in review spread. I added this grid washi tape first as the weekly tabs background on this side, then I'm writing the month in review title on the header. I grabbed some more colored papers and I played around different shapes and sizes. My inspiration for this is a memory spread that I've seen a lot using in the past. I believe the idea was by Viv of Monday Morning Designs, so I thought of coming with a similar layout with these boxes. I almost forgot that I have this lemon washi tape, so I'm including this as well for some decoration. So in each box, I'm writing some questions like, how does summer feel different to me this year? Favorite outdoor and indoor activities? Favorite passage from the scripture? Emoji of the month? That was so random. <laughs> and then favorite summer treat. So this left side is more like a favorites page. And on the right side, I have what I'm grateful for, top three accomplishments, small wins, challenges, biggest lesson, and how I would rate the month of June being 10 the highest. I just added some more paper and lemon washi tape decorations on both sides of the title, and that completes my whole June bullet journal setup for 2023. We are almost in the end of the video, but let's take another look at what we did together in a flip through. I really hope you enjoyed this summer fruits and shellfish theme in a picnic setting. I had a lot of fun doing this one and I'm liking the summer colors. Be sure to like and comment below letting me know what you think about my June setup and remember to subscribe to the channel for more bullet journal content. But that's it for this plan with me video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye everyone!